Hey guys, Joel's coming at you with another reasoning sesh where I challenge the status quo of the wisdom of the world and the church by diving deep into the ancient scriptures, uncovering meanings glossed over by translations and traditions, really cut into the core of the metaphysical aspects of these ancient texts and applying them practically to situations in our present day so that we can step up and manifest our best life yet and manifest Earth 2.0. And with that being said, I'm going to cover today how once you tap into the divine essence that the Living Logos is, you don't want anything else. Nothing compares to that kind of passion that ignites in your own soul. Come now and let us reason together. Come now we can talk But before I begin, I gotta say, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more, and stay tuned because as we accelerate forward, we are literally building a momentum that will be unstoppable in the face of the kingdom of darkness as we break through the barriers of what has been imposed on us for generations and literally step up as sovereigns in this earth and manifest that utopia that we know we've come here deserving of. We don't deserve anything less anyway. And that's our birthright, having been made in the image of Elohim in this physical reality. Well, with that being said, I'm just going to jump right into it. Today, I'm going to be covering a couple verses from the beginning of the Song of Solomon. And this is literally one of my favorite books. It was one of the first books I also translated into English when I started researching the Hebrew and understanding how all of this stuff fits together and just what power and what kind of potential has been hidden from us by these religious institutions from, you know, ages ago. Since man has been capable of controlling others, these positions of authority have magnetized those with this controlling Jezebel type mindset to keep us ignorant as incompetence so that they can manage all of our birthright for us and keep us out of tapping into that abundance that source is constantly streaming to us all along. But let's just begin with a couple verses here. Now in Hebrew, this whole song opens with the phrase, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now in the Hebrew, Song of Songs means literally the best song of all songs. In Hebrew, it's Shir Hashirim Asher Leshlomo, a song of the songs, which is for Shlomo. And that Shlomo can be translated as Solomon, but when you actually translate what the word means, it means wholeness. So this is a Song of Songs, which is for wholeness. And this is that wholeness, that peace, that harmony that you tap into when you're actually walking in tune with divine source. And it opens by saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. And of course, we understand that source manifests the created world through the spoken word. But when you're speaking the word out of your mouth, that's one level. Words are one level. But kisses are a function of a mouth that's on an entirely different level that infers that intimacy with source so when these words are revealed to you they're literally like kisses for the soul and it goes on to say your love is better than wine so it's comparing that kind of affection that kind of endearing passion to even better intoxication than wine and of course wine is a shadow for the blood of the logos if we look at other passages but he goes on to say because of the savor of your good ointments your name is as ointment poured forth Ointment refers to that oil, that chrism, but that's literally the anointing and that's that fire power of Holy Spirit. That is literally source alive in each of us. And throughout this song, it's talking about spices and it's talking about all these kind of herbs, different trees and different incenses. I would really love to get into that. And I do want to share my translation of this book, but I got to lay some groundwork first because people can get distracted because it's such an easy book to like fall into that physical, mundane, sexual interpretation of it. And a lot of people compare it to the early hymns of the Hiros Gamos, but the Hiros Gamos was just a mirror of the intimacy that the kings and priests, literally the anointed of Yahweh, and throughout the ancient Near East, this was the tradition to anoint the kings and the prophets as they stepped up into this role to actually be the vessels of divine source. Literally those whose year source had opened. But talking about this, it goes on to say, therefore do the virgins love you. It's those who are not perverted with compromising their 
inner desires with physical means or circumstances or physical manifestations. Once you tap into the transcendent cause, all of these physical manifestations just flow out of you. It's the nature of the creative force, mind you. And because Source is the one that actually calls us, it goes on to say, draw me, we will run after you. So when Source literally puts this desire in us for us to tap into that kind of essence, that's the only time we will run after that. That's the only time we will literally pursue these higher things. Because you look at the world and you try talking about this stuff to other people. I knew growing up, I was always tuned into like the deeper understanding of life and literally hacking this physical matrix. But I couldn't talk to anybody about it because you just mentioned it and it's like it goes right over their head. Source has to put that inner inspiration in them to convict them to actually pursue these higher paradigms. And then there's nothing else that will satisfy. Once you tap into that, it says, The king has brought me into his chambers, referring to that inner heart space. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. Again, comparing that inner gratification to, you know, physical intoxication. But it goes on to say the upright love you. Those that are actually walking in line with source and that code of conduct that literally is righteousness or holiness. When there's no contrast between what your physical ego wants and how Source literally manifests from the higher dimensions. Man, I could go on on this whole book, literally verse by verse. But I'm not going to do that right now. And I don't think between reasoning sessions and actually going through the book verse by verse, I'll have much time for anything else. Mind you, even these reasoning sessions, like, I love doing them. I love explaining this kind of stuff in this way because it all fits together. If you watch all of these reasoning sessions, they all have a common theme. And it's all to step up into your power as manifestors in divine source. And that power that divine source is trying to give us is something that we're not lacking anything. We're literally walking in this ease of life. That's also compared in the phrase like Yahweh is my shepherd I shall not want. You're not wanting anything. When you seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness all these things are added to you. You know I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging bread. That literally is the power that we have but that's the very thing that you know religious institutions want to demonize and literally say like Pfft, that's a cult. But guess what? That's literally what the book is saying from start to finish. You look at how wealthy Avraham was. And then Yitzchak reap abundance during a famine. And even how wealthy Yaakov was. Like, man, that was before the revelation of Christ. And now that we have the revelation of Christ, how much more are we joint heirs in that inheritance? But that's a whole other tangent. Sorry for going off on that. I just had to address it because so many people are fighting the very thing that will actually cause them to be those capable vessels or agents in place to actually bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. As it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there's nothing lacking. In heaven, there's nothing broken. And it says the chastisement or that reprimandation of our shalom, our peace, our wholeness was upon him. Talking about the Nazarene Yeshua, and by his stripes we are healed. We don't deserve anything less. And that's the potential that we can literally tap into. So receive it now. Don't let religious institutions convince you otherwise. Do your own research and find out the real potential that Source wants for you as you were born for such a time as this. So I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I wish you all the best and absolute shalom. Because literally, if you're not walking in absolute shalom, the whole world is missing out. So with that being said, I'll check you in another reasoning sesh. Joel signing out once again. Agape. Salam. Namaste. Shalom.